there's a huge cleanup operation underway. The, the town has been blanketed in the thick film of volcanic dust. Um, but look, they're making progress. The roads have been cleared. Um, the buildings are being, are being cleaned up. Um, Luna Road um, on the waterfront, you'll be very familiar with. Um, a, lot of, a lot of rubble, a lot of um, rocks strewn up with the tsunami. Some damage to the buildings there. But um, Lukolok is trying to get back to normal. Um, it appears, John, that there was a lot of very serious damage on the west coast of, of Tomatapu, the, the western coast, the, be the beaches there. I was actually picking up some catering from Hatapu Beach as the tsunami was, um, was coming in. I was just loading up my car and, um, and left and I could see the tsunami coming. So that, that area um, has been hit very, very bad um, and we're still, reports are still coming in on people think of the damage. I think the government here has declared a state of emergency. Um, there's obviously a priority in getting the runway cleared so that um, and the emergency supplies. Obviously communications are down and there's an urgency to, to try and, and address that issue. The challenge is nobody is in contact with anybody on the island um, and therefore we are all a bit in the dark about exactly the scale of damage or what people are experiencing. Now what we do know is that the uh, ash fall has been significant and the tsunami waves have been destructive but we don't know the extent of the damage. So we're having to do a lot of you know, a lot of estimates based on what we know from responding to other disasters of this nature in the region and around the world. And the current eruptive period started uh, in December 2021, and uh, at the start, the type of eruption was similar to what had happened in the previous decades of the. Uh, at the volcano, Hunga volcano, and it's only from the 13th uh, of uh, January and again on the 15th of January that uh, uh, the magnitude of the eruption increased significantly. Now, it's still not clear why that should have been, whether uh, it was driven by something inside the volcano, so the magma supply, or whether there was an impact of something that happened uh, happened near the surface or near the summit of the volcano, such as a partial collapse that could have uh, affected the kind of superficial plumbing system. Uh, we visited the volcano in 2015 and uh, looked at the uh, historical deposits. Um, so there, there were very large eruptions, likely larger than we saw on Saturday. Uh, back 900 and 1800 years ago uh, from the from the same volcano uh, but uh, in the intervening time most eruptions were of a relatively kind of milder uh, type uh, there is also issues understanding what exactly triggered the, the tsunami because uh, the tsunami reached very far uh, shores in North America and Japan and, and caused significant damage there. So a simple model of a tsunami being generated by an explosion, let's say at Hunga volcano, and then dissipating its energy as it uh, kind of travels outwards, as it's uh, usually understood um, to happen, doesn't, doesn't work. So there must be some additional uh, processes that helped this tsunami kind of keep its energy as it was migrating across the ocean. Uh, as the, the plume rose beyond 20 kilometers, it reached well into the stratosphere. So a lot of that ash and gas will remain within the stratosphere for quite a number of uh, weeks and possibly months and uh, kind of circulate across the globe. Uh, the more immediate impact on Tonga especially was the uh, the ash fall uh, directly from the from the cloud, which blanketed most of the uh, Tongan landscape in a few centimeters of ash from what has been seen of satellite images. Uh, and that basically had an impact on uh, uh, basically water, uh, drinking water sources, on vegetation, grazing for animals, etc. Uh, because the volcanic ash is toxic.